Hey guys, today we're going to continue our exploration of the introduction to animation and cinema 4D. So we're gonna dive right in. Gonna create a cube. And how about today we make it a nice blue color, maybe a night blue. And let's, why not, let's give it some glow. We don't really need reflectance. Actually haven't used this feature in a while. All right. So in the last tutorial, we went over how to, or I introduced to you how to animate objects, such as this cube right here. But in each of our movies, our little animation movies in the last tutorial, they were all 90 frames long. Now, in Cinema 4D, each second, um, they are 30, in, in a movie in Cinema 4D, they are about 30 frames per second. So 90 frames will give you a total of about 3 seconds. But, of course, you might ask, what if you wanted your movies to be a little longer or a little shorter? Well, what you can do is you see this, uh, this little area right below the frame bar. You see this this um, this beam right here with zero frames to the left and 90 frames to the right. Now, this is basically telling you that if you were to make an animated movie, it would go from zero frames to 90 frames. Now, what if you wanted to make the movie a little longer? You just simply increase the number of frames. So you can type it, you can change the number of frames just by clicking on it and typing in how many frames you want the movie to actually be. So 30 frames per second, if, you, if we wanted our movie to be 10 seconds long, we can type in 300 frames. And now you see this, it's now 0 frames to 300 frames. Now as you can see, the, the, the frame bar hasn't really changed, it's still 0 to 90. Because the beam here is still 0 to 90. To, make, to see all 300 frames, you have to click this end where it says 90 frames, click that little arrow and then just drag it all the way to the end and now you can see all 300 frames. And if you wanted to narrow it back down, you can click the same arrow and drag it back to whatever number of frames you want to see at the end. Or you could drag this arrow and maybe make it from maybe 200 to or 150 to um, 300 frames. So you can basically adjust uh, from which frame to which frame you want to see just by adjusting these left and right arrows. And let, I'm going to drag it back to 90. Now as you, hold on, as, as you can see, 0 to 300, we see all the frames, but it's going to take, it's going to be a little cumbersome to try to animate uh, the cube with the entire frame bar when you can see the entire frame bar. For example, if you wanted to make the cube get over, be at this position at 15 frames, it's kind of hard to see where you want to drag the, f the current frame bar so that it shows 15. So it's kind of a little hard to do that because you have to be very precise. What you can do, just drag it back to perhaps 90 and just animate the first 90 frames and when you're done, just click the middle portion of this beam and drag it over. So that way, you get you get you get to see the same number of frames uh, in the frame bar, but you're progressing along uh, the total number of frames from zero to three hundred as you're moving this uh, beam right here. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and animate this cube. Now I'm going to let's use automatic auto key. So it's gonna be here at um, how about I drag this to 100 actually? Okay. 
Okay, on this, it's going to be here at the start. And then 50 frames, it will be over here. At 100 frames, it will be right here. Now I'm gonna, now I've reached the end of the frame bar, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click the middle portion of the beam, I'm gonna drag it over. I'm gonna, once again, continue. And 200 frames will be back here. And I'm gonna drag the beam all the way to the end. 250, let's make it go way back here. And 300, it'll go over here. And it'll go back here. That's where we are. So now let's go ahead and play the movie. Now, as you can see, it starts out at 200 frames. You know why? Because if we leave the if we leave the frame bar like this, we are basically saying we only want to see the movie from 200 frames to 300 frames. Uh, Cinema 4D will only play the movie starting at the frame that appears in the leftmost uh, position in the current uh, in the frame bar. So if you want to see the entire movie, you gotta drag the beam so that to make sure all every frame is visible within the frame bar. So basically, you gotta zoom out before you play the movie. So now, if I drag it all the way to zero, you'll see that the whole movie plays because all of the frames are, can be seen within the frame box. So Cinema 4D knows that we want to play all the frames. Now, now I got that out of the way, I'm going to stop the process. I'm going to delete the cube. Now I'm going to create two new cubes. One of them is still going to be blue and I'm going to create another material. Uh, one of them is going to be... How about a nice yellow? Okay. Now I want to demonstrate how you can animate multiple objects. So something you should know something you should know about multiple objects. Go to and this time let's just stick to 90 frames. I'm gonna change it back to 90. Here we go. So first off, I'm going to animate this cube with manual keyframes. So as you learned from the previous tutorial, these little checkpoint frames show up each time at the at each frame in which I set the position of the cube to. So you see these little blue checkpoint frames at 30, 60, and 90. These were the frames where I set the cube at a specific position. Now when I click this cube, you see the checkpoint frames disappear. Well, why is that? That is because each object in Cinema 4D has its own frame bar. So when you click a different object, it, the frame bar basically refreshes because you haven't really animated this one yet. Each uh, cube has basically a different frame bar. That's pretty much there for convenience. And so you don't get confused um, on which, which, um, which object the blue, a blue checkpoint frame belongs to. So, and also a good scene is, even if you're on another object, as you drag the current current bar, you will see that all the other objects continue to move, um, just like a regular movie. So basically, even if you're on a different object, as you move the current bar for that ob object, say you're at 15, 16 frames, the other objects will also be at the position they will be they will be in if uh, at 16 frames into the movie so basically that's good because then you can animate your 
object while knowing where the other objects are you can basically especially if you want these uh, multiple objects to m move move somewhere depending on where the other objects are so I'm going to animate this cube now at 30 frames the, at 30 frames into the movie the blue cube will be over here so the, I'll just move the yellow cube here 60 frames will be up here And I'll just bring it together. Maybe let's put it in the middle. And there we go. So now both cubes have been animated. So once again, what you have to remember is that each object has its own frame bar. Each time you start animating a new object, the frame bar will automatically refresh because each you haven't really animated that object yet. And also, even when you're on another object, if you move the current frame, the, all the other objects that's, that already has been animated, they will readjust their position to what position they would be in at that frame, whether it's their frame ball, whether, whether you're on their frame ball or not, they will still adjust your position to match the, uh, the frame, the specific, their position at the specific frame, no matter what frame ball no matter what object you're animating, no matter what frame bar, uh, what object's frame bar you're currently at, at the moment. That's something to remember. Finally, I'm going to create one more cube. This time, I'm just going to give it the same yellow color. Now, last tutorial, I said that we will go over how to scale objects how to make objects maybe expand, get bigger, or get smaller uh, during a movie. Now, what do you have to do for this? Because this is a special scenario. If you go up here to this button, you'll see that we are in model mode. As you see the little white box. Model mode is specifically for designing, modeling, creating objects. It's not necessarily the best mode for animation. Now, so up, up to this point, we've been animating objects in model mode. If you click it and hold it, you see there are two modes. There's model mode and object mode. And if you want to scale an object in the middle of the movie, you, you must do object mode. Because ob object mode is concerned with, with changing the shape of an object. Object mode is basically like concerned with the animation of the object. While Model mode is basically concerned with making an object. So these are two different areas in Cine 4D. I probably we probably just put these two modes, different modes in there for perhaps efficiency and not to get people uh, not to get people make people too confused, or maybe just to establish uh, two different uses in two different areas. So what you have to do, remember, if you want to make an object bigger or smaller during the movie. You have to go up here to this button, click it, and click and hold, drag the mouse to object, the object tab, and then let go. So then it's an object. If you're already in object mode, go ahead and end. But if you're in model mode, you want to scale an object, you got to go to object mode. If you try to scale an object, animate an object, and scale it in the middle of the movie in model mode, then it just basically it the the object stops out in the movie, the same size um, as it will be in the end, and it will just remain that size throughout the movie. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to animate this. So auto key, and here we go. Be here at 30 frames, and it's going to be here at 60 frames. I'm going to scale it. Scale all, um, scale all x, y, and z components of the cube, to basically to make it bigger. And 90 frames, the cube is going to be over here, and it's going to be move it. It's going to shrink, and in the process of shrinking, it's also going to actually you're right. 
it's just turning it into a rectangle. Because if I wanted to rotate it, I should have done, I would have done manual keyframes if I wanted it to rotate uh, after, from 60 frames to 90 frames. Alright, so now let's play the movie. As, and as you can see, it gets bigger or smaller as the movie progresses. Now I'm going to delete all the keyframes, so I'm going to go here to timeline, like I showed you in the last tutorial. And I'm gonna sh finally, I'm gonna show you what happens when we try to animate the op, try to make the op, scale the object, and model mode. So manual keyframes. So if I want to scale it by making it smaller, just make the object smaller, but I'm in model mode. You see, well, it's not moving, so definitely something must. Oh yes. I remember what happened. Hold on, let me redo that because I forgot to set the manual keyframe at the end. So once again, I move it back over here. I'll rest restart. to make it smaller but this position at the end so I want it to be at its original size at the beginning but smaller at the end I want to make it shrink as the movie goes on but I am in model mode so as you can see the cube basically starts at at the same size as, as it will be in the end it does not shrink in order, of, if I wanted it to start its original size and shrink as the movie goes along, ending with this shape at this size at the end, I have to go into more object mode. So that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, please let me know. And have a great day, everyone.